Okay. So, some more questions. Um, some straightforward questions on some area and volume. So let's just look. This first one is asking to find the area of a trapezium. Now, you can split the trapezium into a triangle and a rectangle, which is a perfectly acceptable thing to do. Um, or you can use the formula. So let's just go through both. If I did split this into a triangle and a rectangle, um, this side would no longer be 13. Um, we'd have 7 on this side and obviously 6 there. So if the rectangle and if the rectangle is just 7 times 10, which is 70 centimeters squared, and the area of the triangle, which is remember the area of a triangle is the half the base times the height. In this case, the base, well, it doesn't matter which one we do, so it's a half times 10 times 6. So it's 60, half of 60 is 30 centimeters squared. So therefore, that the symbol means therefore, the trapezium is equal to, just adding these two bits up, is 100 centimeters squared. There's actually another way to do it. Um, if you're doing a foundation paper, you get uh, a formula. And if you don't, you should know the formula anyway for trapezium. The area of a trapezium is half the sum of the parallel sides multiplied by the distance between them. And usually, they're talking about a trapezium, often the picture you're given looks like this, where the parallel sides are of A and B, like that. They're the sides of the length of the parallel sides, and the height is how far the distance are between them. But obviously in this case, we've got it slightly rotated around. The 13 and the 7 are our A and our B, and the height is the 10 here, the distance between them. So if we do that, if we use the formula, half of the sum of the parallel sides, which is 7 plus 13, multiplied by the distance between them, which is 10. So in this case, 7 plus 13 is 20, so it's half of 20, which is 10, times by our 10, which is 100 centimetres squared. So you can either use a formula, or you can um, just split it into a rectangle and triangle. For the volume, well, volume is quite easy. It's a three-dimensional measurement, so we've got to multiply the three different dimensions here. So the volume is 10 times 15 times 6. And actually, you can do this in any order. So I'm going to do 6 times 15 first, which is 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 5 is 30. So it's 90. So really, I'm doing 10 times 90, which makes easier, which is 900 centimeters cubed. And we've got a centimeters cubed because it's a three dimensional measurement. Volume is three dimension. Area is only two dimensions, so that's why we've got squared. Now, just I did I chose to multiply by ten at the end because multiply by ten is easy. So I did the slightly harder multiplication first and left the, the times by ten to the end. Let's have a look. Cuboid. Well, we don't have a picture here, but we can draw a picture if we need. We don't really need the picture. We just have to multiply the three numbers. So it's got a height of three meters. Uh, a width, oh that's a rubbish picture, let's draw that picture again. A height of 3 metres, a width of 5 metres, so that's the front of the rectangle, uh, the cuboid, sorry, and then it looks something like that, and it goes back for 9 metres. So to find the volume, like before, I've just got to do 3 times 5 times 9. I can do it in any order I like. So 15 times 3 times 5 is 15. 15 times 9 is 135. Well, you could do 10 times 15 is 150. And take one off. 135. And our units are meters cubed. Meters, three-dimensional concept of volume, so it's cubed. In this case, 
we've got we don't have to draw the diagram we're fairly comfortable about what's going on this time normally to find the volume you're doing the length times the width times the height so what have we got we've got the volume of well we're told the volume in this question so we're told it's 160 is equal to 8 times something times by 4 so we know that 160 is if we do the 8 times 4 is 32 times something so we'll do 32 times something that's going to give us the answer 360 so we can divide by or we can just check the number in our head so it's obviously going to be 5 so it tells us that the width of the rectangle is going to be 5 centimetres. So kind of like a backwards problem. Look at the last one. We've got a box in the shape of a cube has sides which are 2, two centimetres. These cube boxes are placed into a larger cube box with height Eight. Well, let's look at this. Let's draw a sketch out just to help us. So it's a height of eight and a width of ten. So if we draw the front face, it's an eight there and ten there. Oh, sorry, six there. Eight there, six there. And if we draw it going backwards, it's a quick sketch. It goes ten backwards. Well we want to find out how many of the little boxes we can fit in. So if we work out how many we can get across, how many we can get back and how many we can get up, it's going to help us. And we know that two centimeters. So we can get a total of three going along and a total of four stacked up of our little box and we can get a total of two, three, four, five going backwards. So really the little boxes which are two centimeters, we can stretch three going in this direction, four in that direction, and we can stack five going backwards here. So the number of little boxes we can get is just three times four times five, which is just 60 small boxes can fit into the larger. Okay, so how many cube boxes will fit exactly? 60 of them. Go back and have a look at this if you need to. I think that most of the calculations are fairly straightforward.